Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 13th. First up, this was sent by Bob1954 Shadow. This is from eol.jsc.nasa.gov. It's a stream from the International Space Station. Before they would show different views of Earth from the space station, but never a continuous stream. Now they're going to make the attempt to try to do this on a regular basis. And I'll switch over real quick and give you some stream shots of um, how to use it. Okay, here is a screenshot of eol.jsc.nasa.gov forward slash hdev. And you will see the links on my video down below. It looks mostly black right now, but what is happening is there's a chart over here, and the space station is right about here, and it's getting ready to enter into the light. So you will just see blackness during that period of time, but since the space station orbits the Earth completely in 90 minutes, it's never more than about 45 minutes into the darkness. So, And as a matter of fact, right there, you can see the sun's pe peeking up. It's actually coming over the horizon and getting into the light part. So, yeah, it just uh, takes a little bit of time, but if you want to see, the, the plan is now that instead of just doing this on an occasional basis, they are going to constantly stream a view, the astronauts view, from the International Space Station so that you can see it in real time all the time, minus probably some kind of slight delay. And like they said, occasionally, because of loss of the KU band transmission, they may lose it for that reason, but they're going to try their best to stream a nice view of the Earth. Right now the sun glare is just taking it all out, but within a few minutes, if you were to keep watching this, you could actually see um, pretty good view of the clouds, the ocean, the continents, stuff like that. I've watched it myself, and it is a pretty interesting sight, so I'd say check it out. Here in this part, we're getting a little bit more away from the sun's glare, being able to see some of the surface features of the Earth. You can also take and make it full screen, so you can see a little bit better view there. And right now, it's over somewhere between Washington State and the borderline of Canada right now. And, as usual, you can just use the chart to see where it's exactly at right now. So anyway, that's a view of the streaming from the International Space Station. Next up, this is from CNN Money. Radio Shack almost out of cash seeks a lifeline. They're still struggling to try to get some kind of money. Radio Shack was down about 20% um, last year due to lack of customer traffic and weak demand for mobile devices. Losses more than doubled to 137 million. They expect to have enough cash to last maybe till fall of 2015 and they want to close some stores and also the trouble with that is when you're running low on cash it also does cost money to store to close down the stores too besides. So even if they're going to close down 200 stores which is in the works they're even going to probably need a cash infusion to even be able to do that. I've noticed lately my Radio Shack is about deader than dead. I've stopped by maybe twice in the last year, and the first time was not a really great experience. I bought a, a $6 cable, and they wanted me to donate money to charity. Then they asked me, um, do I want a warranty on it? Then they asked me, do I want to buy batteries? And I'm like, I just want to buy a stupid cable and get out of here. Just leave me alone. And then the last time I actually talked to them about that, it didn't happen the last time, but I actually talked to them about, you know, it's kind of discouraging to not even want to come in here when you make it a hassle anyway and I'm already paying more than online the only advantage is I get it right away rather than having to wait a day or two to get it by online so who knows maybe Radio Shack will be around in five years maybe it won't I mean I've seen the best buys shutting down left and right and I've seen Blockbuster come and go so maybe Radio Shack will be among that too but if you get a chance and you want to check out this article about Radio Shack's troubles it's uh, not looking good for the future of Radio Shack this next one is from Navy Thomas 8. This is from foxnews.com. It's uh, I've seen this before. It's actually some video of a giant wave pool that the U.S. Navy owns to be able to test ships and stuff like that. The only difference in this clip, and it's only about a three-minute clip, and about two minutes of it have to do with the wave pool, but the part I like about this is they actually show you a little bit more about the actuators. Not a lot. I wish they would really make a special where instead of talking about just the wave pool and the testing itself of the future Navy ships that are redesigned of ships, I wish they would really get into the real geeky part of the actuators and the function and the different um, ways it works. Kind of make it like more like a MythBuster style than just a news report. But it still, it gives you enough good shots that it's kind of interesting. I'll, I'll show you just a quick picture right here. Um, these are some of the actuators. They, they seem to be air actuators or something like that. So they must be a 
some type of pneumatic. It's probably a combination. I bet you there's uh, all different types of actuators and all kinds of uh, functioning that uh, would be neat to see in some kind of a future video if somebody would do a special on. Or if there is, uh, my viewers are some of the smartest viewers on YouTube, so if any of you know of uh, some kind of a special, maybe a 25-30 minute special, where it talks in detail and gives you the behind the scenes of the uh, Navy wave tank showing the actuators, showing the mechanism, stuff like that. It's uh, kind of the stuff us geeks really like. And this last one, I've seen it posted. It's not a really new story. I've seen this posted on Facebook quite a bit, so I thought I would bring it up. This is your brain on a motorcycle. And this was a study paid for. It's done in the, the study was done at the University of Tokyo and paid for by Yamaha Motorcycles. So um, that kind of needs to be revealed, too, because it could end up maybe skewing the test results or at least saying uh, who's paying for the studies and stuff like that. But it, it's kind of interesting. I'll just give you a little bit of it here. Dr. Ryuta Kawashima, author of Dr. Kawashima's Brain Training, How Old Is Your Brain, reported the outcome of his study and the relationship between motorcycle riding and the human mind. Kawashima's experiments involved current riders who ride motorcycles on a regular basis. The average age of the riders was 45, so this was mostly riders between the ages of 40 and 50, and ex-riders who once rode regularly but had not taken a ride for 10 years or more. Kawashima asked the participants to ride on courses in different conditions while he recorded their brain activities. The eight courses included a series of curves, poor road conditions, steep hills, hairpin turns, and a variety of other challenges. I think, although they don't say the study says it directly, and there's actually two studies if you read this, it's it's two different studies, but they're similar. Um, I think what they want you to lead you to believe is, and it, and it may be true, but they don't really get down to it and say it, that um, like tests in the past of doing brain puzzles or uh, say older people in their 40s and 50s taking up a mu musical instrument. Uh, I've seen studies to where that can either put off or totally eliminate the possibility of you ever getting Alzheimer's or early onset dementia, things like that. And I think that's the connection they want to make with this study paid for by Yamaha Motors. But obviously Yamaha Motors has a, has a dog in this fight, so um, take it with a grain of salt if necessary. But it's interesting, and if they do more experiments like this, I don't see why not. I mean, the amount of concentration you need to do using both hands and both feet, keeping your eyes on the road, if you're successful and uh, stay alive long enough as a motorcycle rider, I would say it, it requires a great deal of skill and concentration. So it, it may be something if they could even uh, just do a study by survey of motorcyclists, too, compared to non-motorcyclists and, uh, you know, how, how they age and how their brain changes. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.